Tacoma. It is Thursday, December 10th, and welcome to your TV classroom. Third graders, how are you today? Whew, let me tell you, I have had one of those weeks where I've learned a lot of lessons. Have you ever had weeks like that? Before we get started today, I want you to make sure that you have your materials with you. And it's gonna be really important today that you have a whiteboard and pen or some paper to write on, and that you have your learning buddy to talk with. So make sure to gather those things. And when you're doing that, I want you to start taking an inventory of yourself and how you're feeling and what zone you're in. So let's check our zone and make sure we're ready to learn. That means we also have all our things. Hmm, my brain's definitely wiggly and wobbly today. And I'm feeling, I love this word, discombobulated. But I am gonna try to focus. I'm gonna take some nice cleansing breaths so we can have a great lesson today. Oh, it always feels so good when you exhale. It's like breathing in and just blowing it all out. And you know what? Rashid's here. Rafa needs to be here. I'm going to cough. Hang on just a moment. <coughs> okay. I should have taken a drink of water before I started, but we'll be fine. So, how are you feeling today? What zone are you in? Yellow. Make sure to tell your learning buddy. It is What's Missing Thursday. So let's take a look at our first slide. See if we can figure out what we know and what do we need to do to figure out what we don't know? Hmm. What do we know? Hmm. Mm-hmm. We know a whole. We know a part. So what are we trying to figure out? Yeah, this other part. How would you solve this, third graders? Hmm. Great idea. Some of you said, well, that open number line, it's still helpful. 199 and 350. Well, 199 to 200, that's easy, it's just one. And then 200 to 300 is 100. And then 300 to 350 is 50. So how, what's the missing part? 151. Great. Let's see if, oh, it did it. I'm using new technology and it worked. That's really exciting. Okay, here we go again. What do we know? We know we have a whole and we have a part. And we know we're trying to find the other part. So what are you gonna do to solve that? Go ahead, solve it. Do you have your answer? These numbers are fairly far apart, so I'm gonna do the open number line. And I'm gonna count the in-between. Now, if these numbers were closer together, I might just subtract, or I might just hop backwards, but I'm gonna count the in-between, the distance between them. So 129 to 130 is one, right? Then 130, to 230 is 100. And then 230 to 330 is 100. And then 330 to 350 is 20. So what's our missing part? 221. How could you check that and make sure it was accurate? we could just subtract, right? We could use the algorithm or what your parents might say, the old fashioned way or the way I learned to do math. We learn it this way too. We just learned this way, the top way first to understand it. So I don't have five tens, now I have four tens and 10 minus nine is one, there it is. Four minus two is two, there it is. Three minus one is Two, there it is. Awesome. I'm going to actually skip ahead in this because we have some big work to do today. Today we're learning the two meanings of division. 
Rafa, what do you think I mean when I say the two meanings of division? Hmm. Well, what does it mean to divide? Okay, what do you think it means to divide? Tell your learning buddy. What does it mean to divide? Mm-hmm. To take a group and split it up. Okay, there's two ways we can split up a group. We can take a group, a number, a quantity, and partition it into equal groups and figure out how many groups we make. Or we can take that quantity and we can partition it by figuring out how many you can put in each group and already know your number of groups. So we're talking about both of those today. Are you ready? This is draw an array to show 20 divided by five equals four. And then we're gonna use words to describe it. So you go ahead and draw, and I'm gonna draw 20 divided by five equals four. So I'm gonna take 20 and I'm gonna do There we go. Okay. Describe your array. What did you do? What were the moves you made? For example, I would say I took 20 and I split it into groups of five and I found out that it makes four equal groups. What did you do? Great, some of you did the same as me. Some of you did it differently. Draw a different array to show 20 divided by five equals four and use words to describe. Okay, so you go ahead, think time you're just gonna play, I'm gonna go and then we're gonna talk about it. Do you have your array? This time, I took 20 and I divided it into five groups. So essentially I had five plates and I found out I could fit four on each plate and have equal groups. So this time I was trying to figure out how many are gonna fit in each group. Where before I was figuring out how many groups could I make if I have five in each group. So those are the two different ways of dividing. Figuring out how many groups a quantity makes that are equal or how many you can put in each group and have equal groups. It says, how did you decide on the number of rows or how many in each row in your two arrays? What did you do? Go ahead, think about it. Turn and tell your learning ready. How did you decide? Then I want you to tell your learning buddy, I think the same division equation can be shown with two different arrays because, go for it. Why can we show arrays this way and this way? Okay, because when you divide, you're either finding how many groups a quantity can make and have equal amounts, or you're finding how many you can put in each group and it be equal. Use any model to show and find 42 divided by seven. Write a division equation and explain what each number in the equation tells you. So go ahead, make your model, and then write the equation. And you don't have to do an array, you can do whatever you want, but you have to be able to explain it. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about what each part of the equation tells us in the model that we drew. I'm gonna work, you're gonna work during think time music.
Are you ready? What did you get? Six. Here's my question. Did you find that seven in each group made six groups? Or did you find that seven groups, you could put six in each group? For mine, I took 42 and I put it into seven groups and I found that there were six in each group. What did you find? Turn and tell your learning buddy. Great job. I heard some people say, I took 42 and I put it into groups of seven and I was able to make six equal groups. So I knew that 42 divided into groups of seven gives me six groups, which is different than what I did. I put seven groups and found out there were six in each group. With division, it can mean either thing. So that's why when we do story problems, it's important to think about what you're finding when we divide. Now, we're gonna do more work with division in the days to come. And then we're gonna dig even further in how multiplication and division help us. I want you to think for a minute. Look at this picture. What do you see? Seven groups of six. Does that remind you of anything? Seven groups of six? Hmm, something just, to start thinking about. Let's talk about your assignment. So your assignment for today is to do page 233 and 234. You're gonna be do, doing more of this work, taking a total, splitting it into equal groups or splitting it into groups and figuring out how many equal groups there are, okay? So that's your work. Let's check your learning. We learned the two meanings of division. We showed that division by using a model. We showed it with numbers, and we were able to tell if we were finding the number of groups or the amount in each group. Both of those things are dividing, finding the number of groups or finding the number in each group. Just depends on what the problem is. Now is your chance for your five minute break. You will need to gather these materials during that break. So you're responsible for getting ready for learning with Ms. Oslin, gathering your materials and being back and ready in five minutes. You're going to need your ELA packet, a pencil and your learning buddy. All right, third graders, go ahead, have a great five minute break and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.
Hi, third graders. Welcome back from your break. I hope you're able to gather your materials that you will need for this lesson. You'll remember we've been reading and writing biographies and the word biography comes from two Greek words, bio meaning life and graphy meaning script or written. So they're books about people's lives. And we learned that sometimes biographers write about people who are passionate about something and have ignited a cause. So for example, in Faith Ringgold's book, If a Bus Could Talk, the story of Rosa Parks, she talks all about how Rosa Parks fought against segregation and worked really hard to make sure that everyone was treated equally. We also read in David Adler and Michael Adler's book about Cesar Chavez, how Cesar Chavez worked really hard on labor rights, making sure that people were paid fairly for the work that they did. He also worked to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to register to vote. Those are really important causes that are important to all of us. Today, we're gonna to learn that biographers write also about people who changed the way the world works through their inventions and explorations. We are going to read this book, Man Fish, a story of Jacques Cousteau by Jennifer Barn. And we're gonna learn all about how Jacques Cousteau was passionate about scuba diving and he had to work to invent and create things that would help him be a scuba diver so that he could go underwater and swim with the fish. So let's take a moment, take some think time, and just look at this cover and pay attention to what you notice. Man Fish, a story of Jacques Cousteau by Jennifer Byrne, illustrated by Eric Pyberé. Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea, silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land of swaying plants and fantastic creatures, a man fish swimming, diving into the unknown exploring underwater worlds. No one had ever seen and no one could ever have imagined. I'm noticing that our illustrator did something really interesting on these two pages. He made it really, really dark. I don't know if you could even see the words, but I had to get really close to the screen to be able to read it. And I think it's because our illustrator really wanted us to feel and experience what it's like to be so deep underwater that it's actually dark. What an amazing feature of this biography. Our story starts many years before in France with a little baby boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the very beginning, little Jacques loved water, the way it felt on his hands, his face, his body, and water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. One day, Jacques read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube. Jacques tried it and discovered it was impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly. With the birds among the clouds, with his arms stretched out like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. 
He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was and actually worked. Movies fascinated Jacques too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked, how chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jacques saved his allowance penny by penny until he had enough to buy a small home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up like a villain with a painted on mustache and made some villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, the writer, and usually the cameraman. Now, I'm noticing that even as a child, Jacques was inventing and creating things. He created a crane that was as tall as him and worked. He's creating films. He was so curious about his camera that he took it apart and put it back together just to see how it worked. Very interesting. Let's keep reading. When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed all around the world and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes. Jacques wondered what that would be like. One day at a beach, a friend gave Jacques a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glasses to look through. Jacques wore them into the ocean. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. When he came up, he saw cars, people, buildings, and telephone poles. Once again, he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. I'm noticing something interesting that our illustrator has done on this page. There's that white line that's separating the undersea from the above water world. And notice how different they are. Think about why do you think the illustrator did that? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy why you think the illustrator made the above water world and the below water world look so different. You might have said something like, he, the illustrator really wanted us to know that Jacques felt very different underwater. And he even says at that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Let's keep reading and thinking about how Jacques has created and invented things that change the world around him. Jacques and his friends, Philippe and Didi, began to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera to film the amazing kingdom he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them kick better. But Jacques wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him, enough air to explore the mysterious depths and vast expanses of the ocean, to swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a man fish, and he began to work on just how to do it. 
Now, Jacques invented so many interesting and important pieces of equipment to do his work, but he didn't stop there. Then he explored the world's oceans and discovered many of the new and amazing creatures that live beneath the surface of the water. No one had ever known about these creatures until Jacques started exploring. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it the aqualung because aqua means water and our lungs are the part of our body that holds the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove. He did flips and somersault. He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. Jacques could breathe beneath the water. Now he could swim across miles of ocean, his body feeling what only scales had felt, his eyes seeing what only fish had seen. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Jacques had done it. He had become a man fish. Take a moment and think about how that must have felt physically to be swimming and seeing things that only fish have seen, but also think about how he must have felt about himself and accomplishing that goal of becoming a man fish. Take some think time. Now turn and tell your learning buddy how you think that must have felt for Jacques. Jacques was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and found a big old wooden navy ship named Calypso. In a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. Jacques Philippe and Didi gathered a crew, their aqua lungs, their hopes and their dreams, and set off to explore the inside of the sea to film a world that no one had ever seen before. Now, you might be thinking, Mrs. Oslin, your book is sideways, but it's not. This is something our author and illustrator did as a feature for the biography to get you and I as readers really interested and catch our attention. And also much like they wanted us to feel how dark it was, now it's like we have to turn our heads sideways like we're swimming sideways in order to read this page. Let's do that. On their journey, they dove deep into a seascape of plants, green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery swaying plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. They discover plants that could feed you, plants that could poison you, plants that looked like fish, and fish that looked like plants. Their cameras captured camouflaged scorpionfish, ugly as toads with poisonous spines, dorados, brilliant shining fish that glowed the colors of emeralds, sapphires, and rubies, checkerboard fish with red and white checks from head to tail. Deep down, they discovered a kingdom of giant rays, fish that fly through the water with wings that swim. They came face to face with a fish as big as a truck with, with long fangs, lips like giant tires and huge saucer eyes. They called it the truck fish. On the bottom, they found pink ghost crabs with eyes on long stalks buried so deep in the sand, they looked like a garden of eyes and flute fish with heads like horses and bodies the shape of tubes sticking out of rocky openings like pencils in a cup. Now we're gonna have to dive the other way so that we can read this page. They swam with giant whales, hitched rides on sea turtles, and made friends with porpoises with shining eyes and smiling faces. They filmed fierce and frightening sharks. So strange and dangerous, Jacques and his crew had to build cages 
not for the sharks, but for themselves, so they could make their movies without being eaten. Yikes. Everywhere the Calypso went, Jacques and his crew made films of what they saw. Films that played in movie theaters. Films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques, Philippe, Didi, and their adventurous crew. After Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and dying. Jacques saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. He had to make movies, movies to warn people, movies to save the sea. Jacques spoke to presidents, to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you exploring worlds never seen, never imagined. Whole new worlds, silent and shimmering. Worlds that are now yours to discover, to care for, and to love. When we think of all the incredible scientific discoveries and invention that our world has today, it's really quite amazing. In fact, we could look around wherever we are and see lots of inventions that really changed the way we live. So let's do that. Take a moment, look around the room and think about some inventions that you see and then you're gonna tell them to your learning buddy and take out and then that's what you're gonna think about when you're doing your independent work today. So take a moment, look around your room. What inventions do you see? Tell your learning buddy the inventions that you see around you. Oh, there are so many. I have my glasses, I have my cell phone, I have the computer that I'm working on, so many different inventions and discoveries. In your ELA packet, you're going to find this document, Changing the Way the World Works. Go ahead. And it has an example. As a biographer, as a writer, you are going to think about an invention or discovery that's important to you. And we're gonna, you're gonna fill out this graphic organizer and it's gonna help you think about how to start a biography. It has an example. Let's read this example together. Invention or discovery. Example, electricity. Person who invented or discovered it, Benjamin Franklin. Why I find it interesting, the example says, I use electricity every day of my life, in school, at home, when I go out to dinner, and when I go to a friend's house. I use lights, computers, televisions, and other devices that wouldn't run without electricity. What I wonder about it, how did he discover it? When, how old was he? Was he a scientist? What did people do without electricity? And then I'm gonna walk you through how I am gonna model thinking about this as a writer. So I was thinking about what is an invention or discovery that's important to me? And I thought about hybrid car engines. The person who invented or discovered it, I don't know yet. Why do I find it interesting? Because my car is a hybrid and I know they help protect the environment. 
what I wonder about it. Why are they necessary? How are they different than gas powered engines? And how are they made? Today we learned biographers write about people who changed the way the world works through their inventions and explorations. Like Jacques Cousteau explored the world beneath the sea and had to invent things to help him breathe and move underwater like a fish. And he made videos to open our eyes and make us aware of pollution and how it can be really harmful for our ocean and the creatures that live in the ocean. Your independent job today is to fill out two or three lines in your Changing the Way the World Works graphic organizer and start doing some writing in your writing notebook about a person and the invention or discovery that they came up with. Now, if you don't know who created your invention like mine, I don't know who created the hybrid um, car engines, what a great opportunity for us to do some research together to learn together. You're also going to continue doing your independent reading, reading biographies about people who have ignited, have ignited a cause or who have changed the way the world works through their inventions or explorations. Thinking about are you really understanding what you're reading? And if not, you can use this document to help you. If you find your mind wandering, which means thinking about something else while you're reading, you can also use this document to help you stay focused. And always continue adding to your reading log, keeping track of your goals and how long you're reading and whether or not you are focused. And send this to your teacher at the end of every week. Third graders, thank you so much for reading and thinking with me today. I hope you have a fabulous afternoon. And before I send you off, we're going to do our affirmation. And I think it's important to redo the one that we did on Tuesday because I can still do hard things. Practice saying that with me. I can still do hard things. Yes, you can, third graders. Thank you so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.